Today's message is about Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Uh, let's read it through. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the field produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pan and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Amen. There's a story that goes like this. Once, the devil announced that he was closing his business and selling his tools to anyone who would pay the price. And on the night of the sale, the tools were attractively displayed, and many of them are displayed with a price tag. Malice, envy, hatred, jealousy, sensuality, deceit, and every other instrument of evil were laid out. Apart from them lay a wedge-shaped tool, seemingly harmless at first glance, but it looked much older and more expensive than any of others. Someone asked the devil what it was. And this devil answered, it's a discourager, also known as a disappointment. Then why is it so expensive? And evil replied that it is because it's more useful to me than anything else. When I can't get into a person's consciousness with any other tool, I use this wedge of discouragement to get into their consciousness. And once I am in there, I can work with all the other tools at my disposal and that is why this tool is more useful than any other tool. And one addition, it is so expensive because very few people know that this wedgie is the tool I use as the devil. And somebody else asked again. So did you always succeed with this tool of discouragement? Have you ever failed? Then the devil hesitated for a long time and finally said in a low voice, well, you can use it on a grateful people. And great people are actually the reason I am getting out of this business. There is a book written by William Rathbone in 1911 titled The Devil's Suction. This story was in that booklet. And this story has been reprinted multiple times and it has been inherited until today. It was also covered on the page 17 on the January version of 1952 the Guided Post magazine. I think many of you have, have read about this story. It resonates with many people even today. It describes how powerful this encouragement can be to human being. It's a very small and short story, but at the end of the story, the author added one comment saying that the price tag is too high, so the discouragement was not sold. So the devil is still having discouragement, and he's using it for his own purpose. It has been 110 years since the author wrote this story. But still, the devil used the tool of discouragement. Discouragement 
is so powerful and very valuable weapon for devil. There are many times in our lives when we wonder where did this come from? What about love? Where do you think that comes from? When I see men and women in love, and when I see people loving and caring for each other, I sometimes wonder where does this love come from and what makes it happen. Same thing goes for gratitude or grace, gracefulness. Where does this gratitude come from? Why do people have this system of consciousness called gratitude? So does disappointment. Why do they exist in our consciousness at all? I don't know if advancing brain science will be able to answer these questions, but what is clear is that there is love and there is gratitude in us, in our consciousness. But at the same time, we have disappointment and hatred as well. And it is interesting how they can lead our lives in opposite directions. It's almost as if this is the foundation of our world view. Sometimes we are disappointed and sometimes grateful, but these two can go hand in hand at the same time. Always they go in different directions. Sometimes we are discouraged and sometimes we are giving thanks, but these two things cannot happen at the same time. As we go through life, there are so many times when we disappointed. If you count problems and list the difficulties and talk about the difficulties, we could go on and on and on. The list will go on and on. So the disappointments are endless and the discouragements are endless and limitless. So they lead us to an unhappy life. Conversely, gratitude does the same. If you count the things you are grateful for, more things you are grateful for will surface and manifest. If you count your blessings, you will count more blessings as time goes by. Gratitude begets gratitude, and gratitude breathes happiness. Gratitude doesn't just make you happy. It actually has the ability to save everything and every people. It can save relationships. It can save communities and society. It can also revive the relations between you and our Lord. If someone is grateful to some, someone else, and if, ex if they express it, and they will build and grow good relationship. But on the contrary, if you are resentful and express it, then the relationship you and the other person will be worse and weaker. So from the perspective, gratitude is another wonderful tool, and that's the tool of a blessing given by our Lord. When your child get married, you want them to live a happy life. But if you want to give them one single piece of advice, then what would it that be? What kind of secret you want to share with your children that lead them to a happy life? What would it that be for your married child? If I give up one single piece of advice to my child and who get married and who have a child, I frequently say that you should be grateful and express your gratitude. You keep saying gratitude, how grateful you are to each other. That is my piece of advice. Gratitude has a great ability to save everything. Sometimes my children say that. I have to say thank you to my husband because he's my husband and he's the father of my child. I am saying that that's not the case. Despite of all that, you should give thanks to him. And despite of all the difficulties, 
you should keep giving thanks to your spouse, then you will have a very happy married life. That's right. Gratitude survives everything. It can save everything. If you want to be happy, you have to say and give thanks to each other. How can we give thanks? You can give thanks only in a situation when you found something that is grateful to. Sometimes many people say the same thing. That is true. If you fail to find condition that you are grateful, then it might be difficult for you to give thanks. But despite of all that, you have to find something you are grateful for. That is because that make you happier, that help you live a help happier life. These days, bad bug is rampant and ubiquitous across the whole world. We thought that is totally disappeared from the earth, so we don't worry about the bad bug for quite a long time, but these days, a uh, bad bug came back. If you were bitten by bad bug, that, that, that's definitely not a thing you are grateful for. If you are bitten by the bad bug, then do you think you are able to give thanks to the Lord? There is a story who actually did. That's a people named Coritan. This is the book titled The Hiding Place, written by Curry Ten Boom. And the writer Curry Ten Boom and her family were oppressed during the World War II. And during that time, they hide some Jew in their home, but it was discovered. So the whole family were sent to a German concentration camp. Curry has older sister named Bessie, and despite of all the difficulties, she was the person who gave thanks all the time. He, she always thankful and grateful to the Lord, and she always praised the Lord. And they were sent to the camp, concentration camp. That was a pretty big room, but the room was full of a bad bug. So they felt like they couldn't live any moment in that room. How can they find the thing they can be grateful for if they are living with a countless number of a bad bug? And Corey said that I can give thanks everything for everything, but I can give thanks for bad bug. I cannot find any reason to give thanks to the Lord if I beaten and live by bad bug but they can praise the Lord and read the Bible together in that room. But after a while, she realized that the prison God didn't come to the room often. And because this is the room for women, so some men guard can, can, can come to the room to humiliate them, but that didn't happen. Whether since they don't, they didn't come to the room. So that allowed them to worship the Lord and read the Bible and sing hymns to the Lord. They think through why they didn't come to the room. And later, she realized that they didn't come to the room because of the bad bugs. Because the room was full of the bad bugs, the prison guard didn't come to the room. So they didn't come to harass them because they didn't want to be beaten by bad bugs. Ultimately, Korea later realized that and we were pr protected because of the bad bugs. So she gave thanks for bad bug to the Lord. Beloved church members, if Anybody at age of 17 were shot and wheelchair bound since then, how can the person give thanks to the Lord? Do you think that's possible? That's the story of a person named Tyrone Flowers. His father was killed when he was 10, so without any parent, he was raised in special schools or some facilities. 
as he navigated through the difficulties, but he had one hope. He's pretty good at playing basketball, and that's the only hope for him because he was one of the promising player. And if he doing good at basketball, and he may make through his life. However, when he turned 17, he was mired in the violent incident during the game, and he was shot by his friend and wheelchair bound since then. He had only hope in his life, which is basketball, but that was failed. How disappointed he must have been, how vengeful he must have been, how full of resentment he must have been, but he missed God and experiences transformation. He wondered why and how the Lord saved him in that way, and he just wondered why he went through all the difficulties and why our Lord put him in all the difficulties. He just keep asking the questions, and he just uh, keep asking the questions to the Lord and find some conditions he can give thanks to the Lord. And finally, he make a confession that, I now realize that my Lord gave me a special ability to work with high-risk urban news because they were going through the things I had a lot experience. Their parents were incarcerated or that they grew up in poverty and they had problems in school. And now I had a life that I could share with them and tell them about God through my story. The youth with the high risk. They, he, because he has a similar background with them, can have an access to them. And he give thanks for that to the Lord. And later, Tyrone then attended the University of Missouri, Columbia on a Fulbright scholarship and graduating with honors and earning his law degree. And then he made a close connection with uh, high-risk youth since then, and he's still responsible for the mission called Higher Impact. It is so amazing. Gratitude changes us. It changes the world and it changes uh, the resentment into gratefulness. And today's reading, Habakkuk hears from the Lord the news of God's judgment on Judah. The day of a tribulation is now coming when Babylon will invade Judah. And upon hearing of God's plan, Habakkuk filled with great fear. And he now awaits the day of a tribulation. And yet, in the midst of all that, Habakkuk sings a song of thanksgiving to God. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pan, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Faced with the news of God's judgment, Habakkuk finds a condition of gratitude in it, the expectation of a God who will save in the future. Even though God is judging now, the Lord is judging now, but He will save us tomorrow. With that strong belief, He gave thanks to the Lord. Ultimately, the Lord, He has a strong belief that our Lord will save them in the end. And that's the condition for Him to be grateful for. That is a great attitude of our life. And that is the master key for us to live a happy life. And people who are grateful can be happy. And the grateful people find this world is livable. And the great grateful people find everything is grateful. When I worked for Changshin University in 2014, back then, we had a Thanksgiving Sunday worship, and around the time when we end that service, then President Kim Myung Jun delivered the message which touches me to the core. Let me just repeat what he said. 
On this special day of Thanksgiving Day, I'd like to deliver one advice to you. We have many singles here. You should marry to a person who is grateful. That's the only way for you to live a happy life. Please remember that. And in particular, boys, please remember that if you're only looking for the good-looking girls, that's not important. If you live with people who always make a complaint and not giving thanks, it's like living together with the evil. You really experience evil. If you're married, there is no way to go around. And the only way to drive out the evil is giving thanks. If you give thanks and be grateful, then the Evil will be driven out. I believe this gratitude is the highest spirituality and highest holiness. Let's expel the evil with gratitude and make the whole world of love and peace. That is a great advice. My beloved church members, my message is only one to you. Let's be grateful. Let's be thankful. And gratitude is the key to the blessings. Let's pray. Lord of love, as we celebrate Thanksgiving Sunday, we count our blessings one by one. May we experience in our lives the beautiful, virtuous cycle of the gratitude that leads to generosity, and generosity leads to sharing, and sharing leads to joy, and joy leads to happiness. May we enjoy the blessings you bestow upon us through your gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.